Okay, hello, I'm Stephen Mumberson. I'm a reader in fine art printmaking at Middlesex University. When I first started doing this, I think I had more a literal illustrative notion of what I was going to do. So somehow it was going to be elements of architecture, it was particularly going to reflect contemporary architecture. Also then was going to reflect um, my collage, my interest in various contemporary sculptors, people like um, Tony Craig, and a whole series of, um, of sculptors from the turn of the last century. Even Cara, of all people, uh, Anthony Cara. The one thing that's been very strange and revealing for me that I hadn't got a clear, formulated end goal. About 10 years ago, I saw some of the very early, rather crude objects that were being printed. They were kind of engaging simply because it just seemed to be conjuring up objects from nowhere. I mean, other than the, the data on, on, on the computer. Obviously, it's actually much more direct and far more kind of solid than that. But it's that whole thing of getting to think in a digital conception of, of something that can be translated into something real. Well, in the, the CAD studio or CAD workshop, it's quite an extraordinary kind of monkish place to go in that there isn't a lot of visual imagery around or all, all the rest of it. I mean, I have to bring it with me or it's in my mind. And so beginning is I might have several ideas, I might have flicked through my um, notebooks and have a kind of, for want of a better word, atmosphere of what I'm, I'm thinking about. Like making a painting, you usually abandon as soon as you start making the painting, because you've got to meet with the materials and the processes. Tend to start with a base form, and then would start using the various processes to either cutting in or extending away. And then, obviously, you can change the scale. For instance, I might choose a hexagonal shape and decide I want to extrude that, but I want to extrude it in very small forms of roughly a couple of millimetres across the whole surface. Almost like I suspect writing a piece of music, you've, you've got to rest it on some kind of underlying structure, then build it up from there. Well, after the first two or three objects, I began to realise that there are limitations. You can actually draw something that's too small to print, and also equally too large to print. There's a kind of interesting kind of hinterland between the two, where you can just push it just enough to be able to do something, and to kind of play with the scale a bit, and the surface. I mean, they're, quite, they're quite intensely complex objects, though quite often feel that um, some of the simpler stages are as engaging. It's really a bit of a debate and as the time has gone on, even though they are, the most recent ones are quite complex, they have a kind of simpler feeling to me. There's not so many elements going in to the edge, they go to the edge to a certain amount, but they're, they're restrained. So there's a certain, element, a certain element of restraint moving in, but it's restraint to the object and the, the intent of the object. So that that's a bit hard to explain because really you're talking about something that's there as a result of a kind of continual debate. I will try this. Will this go this far? If it doesn't, then what do I do? Do I go back? Do I get rid of that command and re-establish another form? Or do I go down another pathway to extend the, the, the work and see what happens there? And just by often adding a very small element, you can change the complete feel quite dramatically. As much as in stamping a rather large extruded form on top, which would almost eliminate the previous information you put there, but take it in another direction. One of the very earliest forms was as a little house little piece of architecture, almost kind of like an illustrative version of, of the idea. There are two particular objects that work like that, but even the second one of that, the possibilities of what you could do and how you could open that form up and maybe just tip it over into something else, started to become more important. So in a funny way, not that the, the um, program's learning about me, I was learning with the program and the limits of the program and then extending the limits of the program. 
So it became a strange kind of joint enterprise that a very, very slight decision can completely and utterly change the direction and the form and the, what the feeling and the intent. To a certain extent, you've got your subconscious, for want of a better phrase, or your underthinking going on all the time. And once you arrive at a certain point, I don't know, maybe it sparks off associations in your head, and then the process speeds up quite quickly. Where the, it's still, there isn't a simple conclusion there. The conclusion is through the combination of that reaction and the process. So even at the end, you might hit a brick wall and think, oh, I'm not sure about this. Really, a process where I was making a prelude to some other piece of work in a more noble material. And I started thinking, oh, hang on, this is a rather kind of silly way of thinking. You're dealing with a printing process. Every other printing process that you've worked with, you, you work with the material that you've used. Um, what interests me very much in a kind of printmaking way is to take the results from the printer quite seriously and see them as the finished object. Whether that will be the way that I would see that totally in the future, I don't know. I, mean, I have been looking into 3D printing with clay. Now that would offer up all sorts of other possibilities and also maybe a level of refinement. I keep saying this, but for my generation it's quite magical. It is a dream come true.